We hear a lot about healthy lifestyle choices to help prevent illnesses such as diabetes or chronic heart and lung disease, but not so much about infectious diseases, at least not until there's an outbreak that hits the headlines such as Ebola, SARS or Zika. But infectious diseases can be a serious threat, so what more can be done? Well, let's now talk to Dr. Luis Chodar, Chief Medical and Scientific Affairs Officer at Pfizer Vaccines. I'm Sarah Lockett. Welcome to the Business Debate. Dr. Chodar, Luis, welcome to the London Stock Exchange Studios. It is a pleasure. Now, just to set the scene, can you give us an idea about the global impact of infectious diseases for adults? Well, in the adult population, common infectious diseases are still a major cause of death and disability. However, it's absolutely true, uh, as you've said, that uh, non-communicable diseases like cancer attract media attention. Um, it is also true that whenever a global outbreak occurs, whether it's um, Zika or Ebola or H1N1, uh, there is massive media attention. However, and paradoxically, for those diseases that occur yearly, like Suster, flu and pneumonia, media does not pay a lot of attention and I think we really, really need to pay attention for these common infectious diseases. And if we think about common infectious diseases such as flu or pneumonia, why are they so worrying? Because aren't they just easily treated with antibiotics? Uh, you are absolutely right. Um, antibiotics play and will continue to play a major role in treating disease and in preventing death. However, we really need to think about um, how we use antibiotics because the truth of the matter is that we are facing one of the greatest public health challenges on our time and this is the rise of antibiotic resistance. Now there is not a single approach to combat antibiotic resistance. One of the approaches as stated by the review of antimicrobial resistance um, issued by the UK Prime Minister in 2014 is vaccines. Why vaccines? Because by preventing diseases, it reduces the demand and use of antibiotics and in turn, slow down antibiotic resistant patterns. Is it the only solution? No, it's not. And that's why we are uh, partnering uh, with a global coalition to look for alternatives, including through vaccinations to combat antimicrobial resistance. Now, if vaccines work so well, why aren't they used more? What are the barriers to the uptake? Uh, there are indeed a number of vaccines that are uh, currently available. And um, despite major advances that have been done to increase the access and the availability of vaccines, it's true that vaccine uptakes in the adult populations uh, remain low. There are precise guidelines for vaccination in adults. However, there are still major gaps in knowledge, awareness, attitudes and belief. Give you an example, vaccines against flu and uh, pneumococcal pneumonia, whereas there are a few countries where vaccine uptake is high. In general, vaccine uptake in the rest of the world remains very low. So to get that vaccine uptake higher, who is it who needs to do a sort of education message? Is it the World Health Organization? Is it pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer? Who should do it? We all have to do it. There is no single stakeholder that has the responsibility to increase vaccine uptake. A great partnership between the governments and the private sector needs to take place in order to improve education, eliminate barriers and increase funding for the proper infrastructure. At the end of the day, what it's important to remember, Sarah, is that um, infectious diseases still are a major cause of death and disability, that we are facing a major public health challenge with antimicrobial resistance. There is a multi-approach to combat antimicrobial resistance vaccines uh, by preventing infectious diseases and reducing the demand and use of antibiotics being one of them. And in order to increase the uptake uh, of vaccines in adults, a broad coalition involving governments and the private sector is needed. Well, Luis, on that note, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. 
and join us next time when we'll be discussing the latest innovations in sustainability and also human capital. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.